the undisputed ruler of this territory is the dominant male leopard, Buddha, a five-year-old sturdy individual in the prime of his life. Moving in and out of Buddha's domain is one of his females. She specializes in climbing the tall ebony and kigalia trees of Muremi. She is called Mosweo, the pale one. Tipa, their three-year-old son, walks a dangerous line within his parents' territory. According to leopard law, he should have moved on by now to fend for himself, but he's still around. Lingering between Buddha and Mosweo can only lead to trouble. He seems blissfully unaware of his predicament. But it is Mosweo's life that has undergone a dramatic change recently. She has just given birth to two cubs. And Tipa poses a potential threat to them. Her litter emerges from her carefully concealed den. She has fared well so far. Her two cubs were born in a bountiful summer. Leopards are solitary creatures. And as a mother, Mosweo relies on all her skills to raise her cubs. In general, leopard cub survival rate is below 50%. The majority of losses happen during the cub's first year of life, while the leopard mother leaves to hunt. It's a harsh reality that leopards have to contend with every time they give birth. Mosweo has no choice but to leave her cubs to find food. From her last litter, Tipa is the only survivor. He's an adolescent. He still lingers near the den site, familiar with his birthplace, frequenting the paths of his youth. Up to now, Mosweo has tolerated his presence in her territory. But the time has come for him to move on. Mosweo is on the warpath. She walks with purpose, her tail held high. The time has come for her to sever the bonds between them forever. Mosweo marks her territory near his tree. The hostility towards her son is plain to see. Their relationship has degenerated into open conflict. Tipa still bears the wounds from an earlier clash. Even though he is now bigger than his mother, as her son, Tipa remains relatively submissive. Reluctantly, he leaves the area. But unwisely, he'll continue to linger on the edge of his mother's territory. As he moves into a neighboring woodland, he stumbles on a mortal enemy. The lion scent carries, and he's alerted. He needs to be careful. His first few days in unfamiliar territory are dangerous, and he's extremely vulnerable. Lions are the leopard's biggest threat. Not only would they kill cubs, but they'd tear Tipa limb from limb. 
He has to skirt around them silently. With the threat to her cubs dealt with, Mosweo can now concentrate on the one thing she does best, hunting. She's an excellent climber. She likes a good vantage point, seven or eight meters above the ground. The leopard is the only big cat that uses gravity to hunt. Mosweo is an expert at it. This technique is quick, quiet, and efficient. But the Impala alarm calls are a dead giveaway that a predator is operating in the forest. The hyenas have heard the commotion. She needs to hide the kill before they see her. They hunt in packs. They're strong and aggressive. Worse, hyenas kill leopard cubs. She cannot let them find her den. In a risky move, she fetches the cubs and leads them back to feed, using the secret pathways she knows so well. With such small cubs, she cannot move the carcass into the safety of a tree, since they cannot climb. Down on the ground, they are all exposed to danger. Staying well hidden is their only option. This is the realm of the leopard. Camouflaged in the broken and dappled scrub, they can feed undisturbed for a while. can smell the kill. The circle around the scent tightens. Mosweo has to act quickly and decisively. She has a plan. Get the hyenas to focus on her and draw them far away enough for the cubs to leave the kill. Leopards constantly walk a fine line between safety and danger. As solitary cats, they have struck a perfect balance. But for a mother, this balance can mean sacrifice. Let the hyenas have their prize. Dead Tree Island changes radically with the seasons. It's one of the few places with permanent drinking water. But in summer, its herbivores rely on the rains for good grazing.
the effects of these storms are felt across the Okavango and beyond. The result is a welcome flourish of green. Fresh leaves, grasses and shoots sprout, and animals leave the forest and spread out into the surrounding floodplains. This abundance of water and food brings on the birthing season for impala, one of the leopard's favorite prey. It happens during a time guaranteed to supply the best in nourishment and protection, minimizing the stress on the young, their mothers, and the herd. But the newborn impalas are highly vulnerable and face a variety of threats. The African rock python is another of Dead Tree Island's expert hunters. Muscular coils squeeze the life from its prey, asphyxiating it. It swallows the calf whole by extending its jaws using specialized hinges. The wandering impala herds provide a reliable source of food. Mosweo has killed one during the night and has hidden the fresh carcass in a thicket where she feeds quickly. To make this kill, she's had to leave her young alone and vulnerable. Now, she needs to get back to the den. As Mosweo approaches the den, she senses danger. Hyenas have been busy nearby, 